All right, let's work through a few more problems. Uh, this one I didn't get printed for you, so you might have to just copy down the, in, the important parts. So you have a particle moving along a horizontal line from 0 to 10. OK, velocity is this equation. And then there is an initial position at t equals 0 equals s of 15. So you want to just write down these important parts. Velocity, uh, initial condition, and interval. So I'm going to kind of show you how to do this on the calculator a little bit more efficiently. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to kind of show you how to do this a little more efficiently on the calculator. Uh, this one, you don't need a calculator. But no, no. Practice without the calculator. All right, so let's look at the first question. For 0 to 10, when is the particle moving to the left? What does moving to the left mean? So we're translating. What does moving to the left mean? Velocity. Negative velocity. Negative velocity, very good. So when is the velocity negative? So you're going to have to find the critical point, make your sign chart, and figure out the interval that is negative. So go ahead and do that. This one's pretty easy. You can factor. How are you guys doing? Pretty good? OK, so first find the critical point of velocity. So t squared minus 9t plus 14 equals 0. So what you want to do is just factor. So that is t minus 2, t minus 7 equals 0. So t is equal to 2 or 7. OK, um, draw your sign chart, 2 and 7. Now, you want to be just a little <coughs> bit careful. Um, make sure you always look at the interval. Sometimes you will get a critical point that is not in the interval. You don't care about that number. OK, so you might want to just put your, the two ends of the interval in just in case uh, to remind yourself, OK, my critical points are the ones that's in the interval. Um, OK, so this one's going to go plus, minus, plus. A quick way to do this, if you have not noticed this trick yet, is think about this parabola. This parabola is going to be an upright parabola, right? So then you are crossing the x-axis twice. That means this side is positive, this side is negative, and this side is positive. So just think how the parabola would look like. The parabola would have to look like that. OK, so that's kind of the trick I use. So I don't have to plug in numbers, especially when it's a quadratic. That's a very easy graph to figure out. OK, so when is it moving to the left? 2 to 7. And it, it doesn't ask you to justify, so that's it. Some of you are still making the mistake on the test where it's asking you like three questions. You answer just the first one, or you answer one and a half. Especially the justification, a lot of people just skip. Please at least write something. And writing something is better than writing nothing. OK, find the total distance. What does total distance mean? What does total distance mean? Absolute value. So we are going to take all of the uh, hills and valleys, and we're going to add up all the numbers, regardless if it's positive or negative. So all the negative becomes positive. All the positive stays positive. OK, let's talk about this a little bit, uh, because a lot of you missed it on the test. Total distance. The total distance is always the integral of because it is an absolute value uh, number, it's basically the absolute value of velocity, dt. Right? You want to take the function and make sure the whole function is going up. And then that way, no matter what area you find, it's always above the x-axis. OK? That is not absolute value of integral. OK, what does this mean? The one on the right means you take whatever position you end up, make that positive. That's not what it means, right? That's not the total distance. This one on the left is taking the function. If the function were like this, you would uh, make sure that everything is on the top. <coughs> and then add up all the numbers. Obviously, that's going to give you all positive numbers. What the second one means is you have this function. It would take this value and make it positive. That's not it, right? OK, so they are very different things. So if you, are, if you have this question on a test, 
that requires a calculator, this is what you can do to save yourself some time. If they don't care how you uh, solve it, they don't, they don't ask something like, when does it change direction? If it doesn't care about that and just wants the total distance, just use the calculator and put the absolute value on the V and then just take the integral. That way you don't have to figure out where it turns because if it doesn't ask you, you don't have to care about that. Just put the absolute value on V. That way everything is, all the area is positive and then you just find it one way through. Does that make sense? Yeah, so like for example, this question you would just put in your calculator like so. And then that would give you the answer right away. You don't even have to figure out that it turned twice. Actually, uh, this one turned only once between 0 and 4. So you kind of have to make sure you're looking at the interval, OK? This is saying, where, what is the total distance traveled between 0 to 4? You turned twice from two, uh, at 2 and 7, but we don't care about 7. 7 is outside the, the interval. OK, so this question would just be from 0 to 4. If you do want to try it on your calculator um, to see how that looks like. Okay, while we're on the calculator, I do want to show you one more thing. It will help you a lot on your homework tonight because the, the homework is uh, pretty extensive. <laughs> okay, uh, things like this. Uh, where is you know the total distance traveled, or when is it moving to the left? Blah blah blah. Okay, whatever it tells you, look at the interval. <coughs> whatever the interval is, only graph that interval. Do you guys know how to set the window setting? Okay, so on the window, you want to only set it between the interval that they tell you. That way you're not looking at the entire thing and then you're confusing yourself. Wait a minute, it turned twice. I see five times on this uh, graph. Why is that? You know, you don't want to confuse yourself like that. Okay? All right, so this answer is 20. Good. Next. Find the acceleration of the particle at time t. What is the speed of the particle increasing, decreasing, or neither at time three? I think you guys are pretty good at this. So find the acceleration and answer the question, is the speed <coughs> increasing, decreasing, or neither? I'm not sure what, oh, okay. I guess if it's equal to zero, it would be neither. Uh, explain your reasoning. Okay, so I don't know if you guys want to label your questions so you know that you are answering all of the parts. Okay, first, find the acceleration. Second, is it increasing, decreasing? Third, explain. Okay, make sure you hit all the parts, okay? So you don't want to miss points because you forgot one part. Okay, A of T is equal to 2T minus 9. Figure out what it's doing at 3. So V of 3 is negative. A of 3 is negative, so the speed is increasing. Okay, that answers both part 1 and 2. Explain your reasoning. Because V of 3 and A of 3, what? Because V of 3 and A of 3 have the same signs. Okay, have the same <coughs> signs is the perfect answer. Increasing is the absolute wrong answer. Okay, do not write that they have, they are both increasing. They are not increasing. Increasing is a direction. So if you say V of T is increasing, that means uh, A is positive. If you say A is increasing, that means A prime is positive. Okay, you don't know if A, uh, well in this case A prime is positive, but that doesn't have to do with whether it's the speed is increasing or not. Okay, so please be careful. Same sign, not increasing. Last one, find the position at t uh, equals 8. Remember, there is an initial position. Find the position at t equals 8. Okay, so s of t is equal to s of 0 plus 0, integral from 0 to t of v of t dt. This is just the position uh, function. If you want to figure out what it is at 8, you would take the initial 
position plus the integral from zero to eight, that is how much it has moved uh, from a, a V of T dt, and the answer is nine and three, uh, two thirds. Okay, last question. This one has a lot of stuff, so you have to copy down the table. Okay, Valerie is going to swim in this pool. Please just copy down the table for now, and then I will tell you what the question is. Okay, so you can see that this table is uh, a record of time and velocity. Um, we are going to take this data. The first question is figure out or estimate V prime of 30. So think about what is V prime of 30 and what you're looking for. Okay, V prime of 30 is just a rock, right? V prime means acceleration. So this is just V of 40 minus V of 20 over 40 minus 20. So the answer is 1 tenth. And this is meter per second squared. Okay, make sure it's squared because this is acceleration. Next. Using the correct units, explain, sorry, meaning, meaning of the definite integral, this thing. So the question is, what does that mean? What is it trying to represent? Okay, so what is the meaning of this integral? Total distance, Total distance traveled Time. between yeah, 0 to 15. So what you want to do is make sure you hit all the parts. Total distance traveled, that's the absolute value um, V of T and then the integral part. And then you want to say from 0 to 50 because you want to be specific on the time. Okay? Okay, next. Approximate that integral using a right Riemann sum using four sub -inter uh, sorry, four subintervals indicated in the table. Right Riemann sum using the interval in the table, the table did not give you equal uh, width, okay? It's not an equal width interval, so please be careful. And be careful, what are they looking for? Total distance or position? Total distance. Total distance, so if it's negative, what are you going to do? Make it positive. Make it positive, okay? So please be careful and read the question. Okay, the answer is 54 meters. <coughs> Okay, make sure you make it positive, okay? Last one. Find the average, Jen's average velocity. Jen is swimming next to Valerie and she has this velocity equation. Find the average velocity. Please be careful. Average velocity, not average speed. If it says average speed, you have to do something different, okay? Just average velocity. Okay, so Jen's average velocity is 1 over 16 pi, integral from 0 to 16 pi of the, her speed, which is 45 over 16 pi meters per second. So you could do this without calculator.